Hello everyone, and welcome to another one of our videos. Please take a deep breath, relax, and enjoy. What are some things about a woman that scream loser? A girl without any interest in anything outside of getting hammered on the weekend. I understand some women plan to just be mothers and not have a job in the future. I don't find anything wrong with that. However, anytime I find a girl who isn't interested in anything, whether it be science, philosophy, art, politics, etc., I lose so much interest. Drinking on the weekend is not a hobby, you have no life. Why are you even alive? What's the point? This sounds meaner than I intended it to, but women that don't do anything for fun in the week are complete losers to me. That being said, I think that applies for both genders, the only thing is that a girl is more likely to get away with it. Women who are cowardly and overly dependent on others but think that acting like a Karen makes them strong and independent. Women who treat every guy they don't know like he must be some sort of creep even if he's done nothing to justify it. Those who seek to get pregnant by a wealthy slash successful man and live off of child support. Girls who use the word creepy to describe guys that talk to them who they don't find attractive. Or anyone that doesn't play games and treat them like a toy to be manipulated. In fact, Girls that use the word game, I had a crush on a girl for years and tried, but failed to win her affections. I heard later that she thought I was good looking and everything, but that I had no game. She was right, I don't and I dodged a bullet for someone who expects me to play games. Complains that they're worried because things are going too well. They're used to there being issues and are worried when there aren't. Can't let their partner go out with their friends without calling them every 5 minutes. Complains about being broke but travels around the world and goes out to expensive dinners, all the while loaning you $1,000 from when they needed help. Mothers who have children for the sole purpose of not having to work. There are stay-at-home moms who are terrific and have always wanted to be moms, that's totally fine and I'd bet they're great moms. There are also moms who have kids because they think it's easier than having a job and use the kids as an excuse not to work. These women probably end up making terrible mothers, though I'd speculate that good moms can still be overbearing at times. I think it's still important to have some interests other than raising kids. I always think it's sad when I see great mothers whose children are all grown up and they haven't found anything else to fill the void looking for coping mechanisms like strange beliefs or essential oils. Girls that have no productive hobbies or serious interests. Girls whose identities are tied to a group, as opposed to a woman who's self-made. Women who can do no wrong. They blame shift away everything in their lives that is negative, even when it makes them a blatant hypocrite. Even if they have to distort the realities of the situation to suit their story. I learned this one the hard way. I now watch out like a hawk for people that can't accept blame for even the smallest mistakes. They post 5 to 10 pictures a day on Facebook or Tumblr with words on them about love, relationships, how they don't need no man, and occasionally pictures of pets. It's like wearing a bright orange t-shirt that says shallow, uninteresting and insecure. Maybe if you got your butt off Farmville and did something for yourself and your happiness, cultivated some hobbies and interests and a life of your own, a man of the sort you constantly pine for, but don't need because you're so independent, will actually be attracted to you. Women constantly complaining about how all the men they date are a-holes. These women are always, always, always the women who refuse to date guys who weren't conventionally cool. Where have all the nice guys gone? They found women who like them and are just as hot. No job. Or they're on welfare for life. They can't be on welfare forever in the US so they often skip from welfare, to disability, to other programs. Past performance is a good indicator of future performance. I'm sure they're nice, I myself was on welfare as a kid, but that's not for me. If they think they can pay the bills with their crafts sold on Etsy the first year they open up a shop. No I'm not buying a solid leather belt on Etsy for $100 when I can get it locally for $30. Obese and tries shaming me into finding her attractive. I had one of these when I was briefly on a dating app last year. She messaged me and when I saw she was obese in her profile pic, not heavy, obese, I told her she wasn't my type and I wasn't interested. She then messaged me again to try to shame me into being interested in her. It was along the lines of how can you know you won't like me until you know me? Lady, I don't have to know you to know I'm not attracted to obese women. Go find someone who is. A girl that can only go one to three months between boyfriends. 
She doesn't know how to be independent and self-sustaining, both mentally and physically. An inability to stay single for more than a month at a time tends to indicate that the person isn't really looking for a compatible, long-term partner, rather they're just getting involved with the first person to show interest because they're emotionally dependent on others to an unhealthy degree. They often get into relationships for the wrong reasons, validation, social status, and an inability to be happy by themselves. All things should be taken on a case-by-case -case basis, but generalizations exist for a reason. Being part of any fandom, no offense but every girl I know who is part of a fandom openly is really annoying. Unattractive, creepy, delusional, and has warped conceptions of what a real relationship is. Being in a fandom is one thing, but being relatively normal while being in a fandom is something else entirely. I love Sailor Moon, but I also have a career, a life, I have social skills, tact. So it is possible. It's just very rare. An irrational feminist. I think most women I know are some level of feminist. However they can be reasonable, say the male perspective sometimes, realize when something goes too far and know not to make every single thing about feminism. I agree with most of the basic ideas of feminism. I believe in equality and would not want to date someone who doesn't. The irrational feminists on the other hand are a completely different ballgame. They are usually bitter angry types who make everything about the patriarchy. I encountered a common human hardship that is shared by both men and women. But I'm a woman so it must be the patriarchy. Basically they will use every bigoted play in the big playbook of bigotry against you and everyone else yet still claim that you are the bigot and need to accommodate their every whim. They constantly minimize and reduce women to helpless children who cannot be held responsible for their actions and hold it up as female empowerment. Basically if I encounter one I keep a healthy distance and try to unentangle my life from them in the quickest way possible. Women who use that obnoxious Marilyn Monroe quote about handling them at their worst, usually as a way to excuse their deplorable behavior and their unwillingness to do something about it. To add to this, girls who find their identity in cheesy Tumblr quotes and romanticize the idea of them. If you can only define yourself by a cheesy quote over a cheesy picture under a cheesy filter, then I presume you don't have much originality to you. And if you feel the need to post similar pictures but with inspirational quotes instead, then I presume you don't have much self-motivation. All this until otherwise proven wrong, I know girls who are exceptions. The actual princess. The actual princess is the girl who, when younger, loved pink and dolls and princesses and fairy tales, fine stuff for a young girl. But as she grew older, she still hung on to the idea of being a princess. Her view of reality became warped, she lost a lot of friends, and found herself alone. But she doesn't mind because she is still holding on to that desire and dream that one day her prince will come. This, plus a Disney obsession, plus little to no interaction with people except for the ones who keep telling her to hang on to those dreams and wait for the right guy to swoop her off her feet and take her away to her new life. And a mix of not being able to actually tell when a guy is interested in her because he didn't show up on a white stallion or fight a metaphorical dragon, makes up what I consider to be the ultimate loser amongst women. She simply cannot win because she doesn't make herself winnable, she makes herself impossible. If she was to be graphed on a plane, she would be, X, Y, to the furthest degree. If she was to be given a number, she would be a 4, simply out of pity. And while everyone would and should feel bad for her, it is hard to hold those same feelings after she invites you to her 28th birthday at home with decorations of princesses, pinks, and no alcohol. She is the actual princess, and I know at least three girls like this. Girls in their upper 20s and 30s that still only ever apply to part-time jobs and spend the rest of the time partying despite being completely qualified and capable of landing a proper 9 to 5 with good pay and benefits, while still complaining how they never have money for stuff. And in almost every case they are looking for a guy with solid career and good income, who they will complain can't come out partying all the time, to sweep them up. My girlfriend has a friend with an architecture degree who still works as a waitress, parties till all hours of the night, recently got kicked out of her place for cheating on her boyfriend. She shops until she's $20,000 in debt on top of her unpaid student loans and generally thinks her slightly above average looks are all she needs to have a happy life. My girlfriend has been asking me why I won't let her set this girl up with any of my single friends. Fake anything. A little makeup is fine, but an entirely new face a wig slash extensions, 
Chemo is a different story, that makes sense to me, nails, eyelashes, padded bra. As well as a fake persona, things like I wasn't sure I could trust you being myself so you act differently, secrets are yours to keep, not talking about that. I'm willing to excuse a certain amount of shyness, but wearing fake stuff or acting fake, such as pretending you like something when you don't, just say so politely, just isn't even a turn off, I simply think they're a loser. If you can't be yourself on some level, if you can't modify your looks but need to replace them, there's a problem somewhere deep down. Expects everyone else to carry her through life. AKA daddy's little princess. Complains about things and shows no interest in changing them. Being 20 plus and acting like 16. This is like one of my roommates. She has three cats, says she can't afford to take care of them, cries to daddy that litter and food is expensive and he forks out money. Meanwhile she's racking up a bill at Forever 21, going to lunch every day, drinking every night. Daddy pays rent. Daddy pays for food. Daddy pays utilities.